Being portable and compact nowadays is more important than ever. Thinking it through, I guess this statement will be valid like forever. Here's a great solution for the office or home multimedia or a business station which doesn't need top end grade of hardware. Packed within only $129 at the moment of making this video, it is right now the most affordable of its kind and has fully working Windows 10 operating system. We're inspecting the first Intel-based thin client by Grey Lizard called the AL1. A warm welcome everybody, tech for all channel, it's Michael speaking and what we do here is to inspect cool tech. Today I'm gonna bring you into the world of mini PCs and we will get to know more about this fully working personal computer which comes with a licensed Windows for only $129 and that includes the hardware too. The price used to be close to $200 with the recent challenges that Intel is facing thanks to the remarkable AMD performance and the holiday season seem to have impacted the value of this in a very positive way. If you want to check more of the details, there's a link in the description below the video. Indeed, the price is shockingly low and there are plenty of good reasons to consider buying one of these little buddies. The only part which will be tough to estimate is the hardware endurance in long term, but my assumption is that it will serve you for a long time based on the experience with other Android TV boxes. For instance, I have a cheap $60 device running 24-7 for the last 3 years and it's still doing perfectly fine. Now, since this is more or less a personal computer, we could compare it to the more powerful home PCs and it certainly is way above Android TV boxes in terms of performance and ability to handle multitasking. It represents a fully working Windows 10 Home Edition base station and perhaps the most significant differences to most computers is the size and the really optimized power consumption. And what you will sacrifice is of course the upgradability. Let us check what is inside the box. Specs are visible on the label. The model is called AL1 and you may find it branded with different names and the only thing which is different is the stamp printed on top. Everything on the inside should be the same. Here's the first look at the device. In terms of size, not too much bigger than the Mi Box S and it's about twice thicker. Only three additional accessories an HDMI cable, the 12 volt 2 amp charger and a VESA mount. This VESA mount allows you to attach it on the back of a TV or monitor and discreetly hide it behind. No need to imagine how great that is for organizing the cables. Of course, it may be standalone or hanged. We take now a closer look at the visible part. Lots of ports, there are almost as many as on the regular size computers, HDMI ports, a VGA port, a lot of USBs, even a headphone jack. The LAN port is gigabit. And on the front, another pair of USB 3.0, even a Type-C port, reader for micro SD, and of course the power button. I don't think you will ever run out of ports, even if you keep it busy with many USB peripherals. More interesting is the hardware on the inside. Quad-core Celeron J3455 from the Apollo Lake line, meaning sort of new, Announced at the end of 2016, paired with 4 gigs of RAM, unfortunately just DDR3, but that is still good enough. A discrete graphics adapter, it's embedded in the CPU, that's the Intel HD500 series. Embedded storage is 64 gigs, eMMC. The good news, it is expandable. You can add an SSD or normal HDD with the size of your choice. There's no active cooling though, therefore make sure to leave some room around the TV box for proper heat disposal. I never got overheating during testing, but with adding an SSD or extra HDD it might get a little warmer. I know that everybody would be asking about performance, so let's go! The CPU can be compared to some of the older Pentium processors and it is very far away from the way a Core 7 or i5 or even an i3 performs. But for basic browsing, creating presentations or Excel spreadsheets and so on, it is quite an adequate solution. I will first show you the operating system. Know that a licensed Windows 10 Home Edition on its own costs more than this mini PC, but most Chinese manufacturers use this little trick of applying a volume OM license, which is recognized by Microsoft as a valid key and you can get all the updates and enhancements which are released. And some websites resell these kind of keys for around 15 bucks. So in a way, your operating system is legit. 
The performance when opening most of the apps is good, and if you get rid of most of the iro and fancy animations, it may get even better. If you make Windows 10 look like Windows 98, things will move drastically quicker. The TV box allows working on two monitors at the same time, one connected with HDMI, another with VGA. You can work in 4K resolution, but that would be very challenging for the hardware in some moments. If you only play videos, then fine, because 4K at 30 frames per second works really good, but 60 FPS is not quite there, and this is what you will need for feeling comfortable in front of a monitor for daily computer tasks. Therefore, 1080p feels like a good choice, and is very optimal, and even though we are approaching 2020, the world is still mostly about Full HD. We can quickly take a look at the hardware devices list, and you can get to the exact model of each and every component, and of course I'm showing some more details about the hardware. For example, now we know that the Wi-Fi is dual band, Intel 3162, there's a Bluetooth module as well. Initial setup will take around 10 minutes, and that's the usual amount of information and agreements that Microsoft are asking about when setting up the Windows OS for the first time, and expect to receive the prompt for an update. You can skip it during the initial setup and come back to this step a little later on. And there were plenty of updates I had to go through before the Windows Update service was happy enough. There's a way to disable the updates, but it is not that easy for Windows 10 after all. Let's take a web tour. Websites are launching rather quickly. The Edge browser, which is embedded, is fine, but most people now use Google Chrome and perhaps browsing with it would feel better. YouTube playback is smooth and so should be it, because the processor supports H.265 and VP9 decoding at a hardware level and you need the latter one for YouTube playback. Logo files run very well too. The popular VLC player runs fine, so does the Pod player, which I tend to use more often lately. The advantage of using Windows is the multitasking ability. It is so much better than on Android. However, multimedia may not be so well integrated. But for most of the fans, there's Kodi, and Kodi is multi-platform and works perfectly well with this Windows 10 Home Edition. Don't expect too much from gaming though. Yes, you can play games, and those that don't need powerful graphics will run fine. Older games certainly work well, and it brought me back to my school years trying Serious Sam. Games were more about fun back then. All current titles are going to run in pretty low graphic modes, but playing is possible. It is unrealistic to expect getting a gaming station for that money, of course. The OS runs smoothly and I was able to install plenty of different softwares and there were no glitches or problems. Because there's no Google dependency, no restrictions about Widevine licensing or whatsoever, meaning that your favorite streaming services will run in good quality if they are supported to run through a browser or a Windows-based app. The obvious drawbacks of having such a mini PC is the lack of upgradeability and possibly the lack of repairability. You can only add storage and USB devices and nothing more, but it is very thin, can be easily mounted behind the monitor and is very power efficient. And performance is well acceptable for browsing, watching videos, listening to music and working with office apps. If you ask me for that price, it is a steal, worth getting even for a backup computer. I know, it is hard to believe that such a tiny box packs that much for around $130, but you have seen it now and it's real and you can find the link to get it at the lowest possible price in the description below. Let me know what your thoughts about it are and catch up with your comments and questions in the section below the video. If you find this research useful then please give me a thumb up and make sure to be subscribed in order to get more tech reviews. I'm Michael and wrapping up with wishes for a wonderful day. Cheers!